Stephen, great to uh, see you again. Uh, would you tell us a bit about yourself? Yeah, so my name is Stephen Allen. I am Global Head of Legal Service Delivery at Hogan Lovells. Uh, my role is to work with what I call our front office, with our lawyers, and really help us do three things for clients. One is to improve our efficiency. The second is to improve our service quality, so not our legal quality, but the quality of our service delivery. And the third thing is to improve uh, and embrace new innovation. So Stephen, we've met before and some of the things you've told me you're personally interested in, but the firm is also very interested in, is cybersecurity and of course the big thing on every business person's mind at the minute, Brexit. Can you go into detail on how the firm is innovating in those particular areas for clients? Yeah, I mean, I think they're two good examples because they give us examples on both sides of the pot, which I think we would argue was, uh, was one of the benefits of the Hogan Lovells. Uh, if I think about cyber security, and whilst it's a global issue, we have a particularly strong practice in the US led uh, by Harriet Pearson, who we hired from IBM, who herself is an Innovation Award winner. Um, and what we've realised is that clients don't just want legal advice, they want help in implementing and testing the system. So in addition to an advisory practice, we also have a consulting business that helps our clients do dawn raids or deal with urgent rapid response to requests. In terms of Brexit, whilst it feels a very UK, and certainly living here, feels a very UK-centric issue, it's increasingly an issue for our global clients. I would suggest we were ahead of the curve. Um, and whilst I think we were all surprised by the, by the result, we had prepared for it and had ready-made advice. So the day after the Brexit vote, when we all woke up slightly bleary-eyed and surprised, we actually had ready-made materials we could you know, supply our clients. And unlike a number of firms, I think, that were, were kind of left standing and shocked, uh, whilst we were surprised, we were able to give clients advice on how this might impact them immediately. Going forward, because we've been there and we're ahead of that curve, our ability to advise on the impact of Brexit across a range of industries, banking and data are the two biggest areas probably that people think about, um, but also what it means for our overseas I mean, you know, clients outside of the EU. So what does it mean if you're an Ameri American company and you're providing into Europe and used to be headquartered in London, what does that now mean for you? I'm fascinated with how a huge firm fosters an entrepreneurial culture. Um, I think uh, entrepreneurs and innovation go hand in hand. How does Hogan Lovells uh, foster it? So it's culture, I think. I think when Steve Imolt, uh, who's our current CEO, uh, came to his position, uh, there was a number of things. So first of all, we went from having joint CEOs from the old legacy firms to a single CEO. I think that did a number of things. First of all, that globalised everybody. Everyone immediately became global because we were all part of one thing. Mm -hmm. I think the second thing is that Steve is an absolutely voracious reader and incredibly interested in innovation and constantly challenged those around the board table. And as a result of which, you've seen uh, a number of projects that have kind of snowballed and created innovation. The other thing is we actually celebrate innovation. So we have our own internal innovation award, uh, which people, uh, and we're just going through a round now, where people make submissions. I think we had over 80 submissions this year um, that we then go through and verify and celebrate. And I think the fact that people realise that this isn't just being watched, but it's being celebrated, actually encourages two things. One is to people to think innovatively, but the second is to actually talk about the innovation, which you know, if you're trying to share something globally, it's all very well doing an innovation in one pocket of the firm. But actually, if we want to draw in value uh, for our clients across the, across the globe, it's got to be shared. And um, how does the firm currently socialise and collaborate on the knowledge that they, they gain? What tools do you guys use to do that? Sharing is always difficult because uh, client confidentiality sometimes makes things difficult. Uh, people don't like sharing because knowledge is power. That's not a law firm thing. That's a a human thing yeah. that's a barrier you've got to break down um, and, and obviously you know we're all left with legacy technology so we have the common stuff that you'd expect we have a SharePoint site we have uh, intranets 
uh, we have regular videos, etc., that talk about stuff internally. Um, I think what we are interested in is how can we actually have a better way of capturing money. One of the things, email is incredibly useful, but increasingly is email the best way of sharing this kind of information? Um, so we're, we're now starting to think, well, how else do we disseminate that? If someone's getting 200, 300 emails a day, um, they need to be addressing client need first and foremost. How do we disseminate this information in a different way? And we're, we're constantly looking at you know, videos and, and, and different ways of doing that. Fast forward 10 years, what do you think we're going to see law firms look like? I think not all of the law firms that exist today will exist in five years or 10 years time. But I think some firms will become bigger and you will see what we've seen in, in, in the accountancy market where certain firms will increase their capacity to, to produce and will become super firms. But you'll also see smaller innovative startups that, that provide a particular, uh, a particular service. And the idea of kind of bundling service providers, as you would with IT at the moment, is going to become increasingly interesting, either with big firms producing some of the facets itself and buying in or partnering with other organisations for other parts of the facets, or clients doing it themselves and clients buying from individual providers and going to the big firms when they really need it. For that to happen, I think there needs to be a much greater commonality of platform. Um, too many of the uh, solutions at the moment are singular focused. So, uh, uh, so you're either going to need platforms that do a multitude of things or you're going to need a much more tangible set of APIs where stuff can work together. You're also going to need a lot of non-lawyers who help stitch this thing together in an effective way. So I think that the big change you'll see in big law is that the, the, the model of having lawyers in the front office only will change increasingly. There will be data scientists, there will be uh, service architects, there will be um, project managers, there will be a whole source of different innovations and different kinds of talent that help bring tech, people and alternative delivery solutions together. Stephen, as always, it's an absolute pleasure to uh, see you and to interview you today. Thank yeah, you. Thanks very much. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers.